Well, hi there, Scott Page here with episode two of my new series, OpenTX 2.0 and Beyond. This episode is titled, Change Your Thinking, How Information Flows. Today's episode was inspired by a question I fielded on Facebook. The writer asked the question, Am I right in thinking, although the Tyrannus is 16 channel capable, it only has 14 channels? Eight switches, two sliders, and two sticks giving four channels? The answer is no. The number of channels isn't how many inputs you have, it's how many devices you're controlling. And this perfectly illustrates a prevailing mindset of many RC hobbyists. They fail to differentiate between an input source and an output control. As a result, a pilot who uses brand S radios is baffled if they attempt to use brand F transmitter because the throttle is not channel 1 as they're accustomed, but at channel 3. What they fail to realize is that until open source firmware came along, the mapping of the source of the input to the output has been decided for them. As pilots, we didn't have a choice. We were stuck with what the manufacturer decided was best for us. What OpenTX does for you is it allows you to assign and mix the inputs to mixes which you then assigned to the output channels you desire. For example, in brand F, they assign the aileron channel to channel 1. Yet it amazes me how many people never go past using a single aileron servo because they're not sure how to get channel 1 to another channel so they can run two servos. The menu-driven system is both confusing and limited. This particular application is not all that difficult with menu-driven transmitters. Most modern radios have it as a pretty basic operation. But how about if you want to do something slightly more involved, such as having the ailerons deflect slightly down and the elevator slightly upwards on the deployment of flaps. This gets really frustrating with menu-driven transmitters, but is a cinch once you understand the basics of OpenTX. One of the most difficult steps that many pilots who move to OpenTX have is getting rid of the mindset that they're locked into doing things only one way. Instead, they must ask themselves only three questions. What do I want the airplane to do? When do I want it to happen? and how do I wish to control it? When they've answered those questions, they're golden. Okay, let's back up a bit and use this diagram to give an overview of how control progresses from your fingers to the control surfaces. In OpenTX, the sources can be a variety of origins, including the sticks, switches, pots, sliders, but can also be logical switches, trim switches, or even telemetry readings. An input source will provide you some value from a control such as an aileron stick toggle switch or your voltage telemetry sensor. You assign each source a specific input value from 1 to 32. These input values are not channels, but information pathways. It may have been less confusing if letters were used to designate each input, but there are not enough letters to cover 32 inputs. Once it has an input value, the source can be modified and the source value changed based upon conditions you specify. We call these modification changes in the rates or expo or putting the values on a curve. Multiple modifications can be made for each input. Each separate modification or input condition will have a separate line. Generally, hardware switches are used to control which input modification is passed to the next stop, which is called the mixer. However, don't confuse input with mixer. I just established that inputs are where sources are given an input number and their value modified and made ready for input to the mixer. The mixer is where we assign a channel number and assign that to a particular control surface. And we use one or more inputs mixed to control that control surface. From this point, the mixed channels are routed to the servo's control screen, where you can specify sub-trims, endpoints, reversal, and even the signal center for the servos. It's said that repetition is the mother of learning, so I'll hit this again. Sticks, pots, and other value-generating functions in OpenTX provide the source for the inputs. The inputs provide the source for the mixes, which are then assigned channel values and the channels are routed to the servos. Now let's look at these screens individually and more slowly. Since the process starts with values from the sources being assigned to an input, I'm going to start with the input screen, and I'll be working in companion. In the input, you'll see that I have four default inputs already to go, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. 
if I wanted to look all the way down, I'd see there's a whopping 32 potential inputs. I can use a lot of different possible sources for these, and let's set one up just for example. I'll double click on channel 5, and I'm going to call this gear. And for this, I'm going to choose a source to be a logic switch, so that I can have a logic switch set up so that under a certain condition, the gear will automatically then deploy. And I'll hit OK. Now, if I don't like the order that these default to, I can change that by going to the General tab, and I can change the default channel order right here. So it could be whatever you want. So the sources for these inputs can be sticks, pots, sliders, switches, trims, telemetry, and that's not all. You can also have logic switches like I just did, mixing channel, training inputs. It's so completely overwhelming to have so many options that I'm just going to stick to some general basics for this video. You have a source which feeds into the input. And this input can be conditioned. By conditioning, I mean you can modify the value to create things such as different rates, expo, and the like. So let's do this for aileron. I'm going to right-click on aileron, and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to have four lines. Now this first one is going to be set up with 100%. And right here for Curve, I click on this, I can get Expo, and I'll set my Expo, fairly high Expo, I'll go with a value of 60. I'm also going to need to have a switch to activate that, which I forgot to do. So I go to Edit, and I'm going to put this on a switch. We'll make this, this as easy. I'll use this A in the up position. And then the next one, I'll go ahead and I'll say my weight, or the rates, is 75. Again, I'll set an expo here, and this time I'll set the expo something lower, maybe 40. And I'm needed to have a switch if it's going to be activated. And so I'll go with A in the middle. And I'm going to go with one more. I'll have aileron again set up, and let's go with a weight of, say, 50. And I can choose expo and expo at about 30. I need, again, I need a switch, and so I'll use. A in the down position. Now you notice that I've left one line at the bottom with no conditions or anything. This is a default line which you're going to want to leave as a as a just in case. Um, we'll talk more about that a little later. It's important to realize that any source can be assigned any number. I could put aileron any place I wanted to. The input numbers are simply for organization. Now in this example I've set up my aileron using three different rates and three different expo values. Each line now has a switch, which will cause that line to be passed on to the mixer. So if A is in the up position, this line will be passed to the mixer as input 1. If A is in the middle position, this line will be passed to the mixer in input 1. And just as if A is in the down position, it'll be, this line will be passed to the mixer. If none of these are true, then this default will be passed. And what may happen is you may have a switch break or who knows what, in which case you want to always have a default. The input is the input to the mixer. So let's move on to the mixer screen. You can think of inputs as the mixer's source. This is where the inputs are assigned to one or more channels. For this example, I'm going to put ailerons on channels number one and two. So now you see we're actually using the channel here, and I've got aileron here. And I'm going to go ahead and name my channel 1, right, aileron, and channel 2, I'm going to choose to go to input aileron, and I'm going to name that left aileron. Now I'm going to go down here to channel 5, and I'm going to put elevator on 5, and so I can choose elevator here. Now I want you to notice that you have elevator without an input and elevator with an input. It's important to know the difference. This is the raw, unconditioned elevator without any rates or expo used. So what you're going to want to use is the input conditioned elevator that you set up that will have your rates. So you'll want to use an input channel for your elevator. And then I'll have it set up like that. Now these channel numbers will correspond to the receiver channels that the servos are plugged into. 
If you need more than one mix on a channel, and many times we do, just create another mix based using the available inputs and add it to the channel. Once the mix is created, the flow of information moves on to the servos. So if I wanted to have mix in the elevator, I could add a line, choose the input B, throttle, and I'm probably going to use just a little bit of throttle in the case that perhaps when I add throttle, I want to also put a little down elevator in because my aircraft tends to soar. So now what happens is I've mixed this throttle and the elevator, and it's going to be on channel 5. Once the mix is created, the flow of information moves on to the servos, where you can adjust the sub-trims, which is here, the endpoints, minimum and maximum, the direction, where you can invert the direction or reverse your servos, you can actually apply um, curves, and you can adjust the PPM center. This way you're able to use 100% of the servo throw. While it's true that you can execute some very simple setups by doing the rates, expo, and servo reversal in the mixer, shortcutting the process will eventually bite you in the butt. Just as taking shortcuts in basic math class bit me when I reached more advanced math class and the shortcuts no longer worked in the new circumstances. By the way, if you watch my earlier videos, you'll see that I was using so shortcuts that ultimately came back to haunt me. So please, listen to this word of the wise. Follow the flow of information, and you'll find it all much easier and much more elegant and powerful in the long run. Sources, go to input, go to mixer, go to servos, go to receiver. Once you understand this part of OpenTX, the rest is really a walk in the park. Thanks for watching OpenTX 2.0 and beyond. I've got plans for many more episodes, so if you like what you see, subscribe, and then you'll get notifications when I post. Also. I really appreciate the occasional thumbs up. Your thumbs up are my only compensation for doing these videos. And being a high maintenance pilot, it's greatly appreciated. Well, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.